inside and out to live a life of reckless abandon in the Lord, putting all my energy and strength into it. I was born into the mission field and quickly thrust into putting my name to the ultimate test. My early life brought painful experiences in ministry, but God ultimately gave me the strength to touch lives of countless people. Throughout my writing and speaking ministry, I am Elizabeth Elliot. I was born in 1926 in Brussels, Belgium, where my parents, Philip and Catherine Howard, served as missionaries. Before I was even a year old, my family moved to America, to Pennsylvania. It was there that my family grew up with four younger brothers and one younger sister. Our house was a hospitable place for anyone in need, especially missionaries. Missionaries were heroes to me and my siblings. Two of these missionaries who strongly impacted me were Becca Scott and John Stamp. Becca Scott once explained to me that she asked the Lord to use her life however he would, because her life meant nothing to her. At the age of seven, I deeply understood that being a missionary yeah. and following the will of Christ was not for the faint of heart. I soon discovered that the newly married Betty and John were tragically beheaded in their missionary field of China. I joined Wheaton College to study classical Greek for the purpose of being a Bible translator. And there I met Jim Elliott, my future husband. We tied the knot in 1953 and ventured to South America as missionaries. While in Ecuador, our daughter Valerie was born just 10 months later. Jim and four other missionary friends became convinced that they should make the gospel known to the unreached Abu tribe. This tribe was known for being savage, which was actually the meaning of their name. After months of minimal contact with the tribe, dropping gifts and baskets from a single engine Piper airplane, the men made a plan to make physical contact with members of the tribe. They landed their plane on the beach near the tribe and waited until three members of the Alpha tribe emerged from the fort. For an entire day, the men interacted with the natives and they were ecstatic. They communicated that they would be back the next day and to bring the rest of the tribe. What the men didn't know was that the tribe did not allow unmarried men and women to be alone without a chaperone. In order to avoid punishment with the tribe, they misled their leaders to believe that the white men had tried to attack them. The following day, on January 30th, 1950, all five missionaries were gruesomely attacked and killed with spears. Jim and I were married for less than three years. In an act of radical faithfulness, I chose to return with my daughter Val, as well as Angel, the sister of one of the other missionaries, and live among the Alpha tribe. We spread the gospel to the tribe who killed our loved ones. Valerie and I returned to the United States safely in 1963, while Rachel continued preaching to the tribe. In 1969, after writing my third book about my faith journey after the tragedy, I married Addison Lech. Lech sadly died only three years later. In 1977, I married my third husband, Lars Grimm, a hospital chaplain. We spent many years together yes. traveling the world for numerous speaking events and distributing my books, which totaled more than 20. From 1988 to 2001, I could be heard on my daily podcast, Gateway to Joy. I had to withdraw from public ministry in 2005 due to my battle with dementia. I died June 15, 2015, at the age of 88. I hope my ministry will never stop inspiring the young and old. I truly believe there is nothing worth living for unless it's worth dying for. I use my life as a sacrifice to God. He is worthy of our praise, and I made every effort to fulfill my role in God's perfect plan. I will leave you with this. We never know what God has up his sleeve. You never know what might happen. You only know what you have to do now.